Welcome to the Horse Talk Show. You never heard of a talking horse? With your host, Louisa Barton. I want to be a famous rider. Presented by Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital. Truth is, I help horses with people problems. Now here's the Brit with the bit, Louisa Barton! Yeah, baby! Yeah. Welcome to the Horse Talk Show, presented by Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital in Complete Care. I'm Louisa Barton in the studio with my co-host Paulette Stout. Thank you to Larson Hay, our broadcast sponsor, Idaho's finest alfalfa. We've got some great events coming up in the horse capital of the world. Uh, very excited that the Horse Fever Family Day is February 13th. Most of you saw the horses arrive rather pale looking white statues uh, ready to be painted. The artists have been staying up all hours of the night uh, painting and decorating the horses, getting them ready to be unveiled to when the public that? February 13th. Uh, and actually the flyer here should pop up just in a moment um, on the screen if you're watching, not listening. Uh, with horse fever and I'm um, very excited to see those unveiling. There are actually a lot of um, uh, really neat connections there and a lot of charitable uh, connections and there's also a um, legacy horse that's dedicated to our chief of police who passed away in a uh, plane accident so to Chief Graham that will be a real uh, certainly a tearjerker an emotional moment but a wonderful uh, tribute to an incredible man who did such a good job. Where is the unveiling? Um, the un the, actually the information should be right there but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> We're still waiting on that. <laughs> Captain Jack. I've been trying. wanting to, I've been wanting to write this down so I can remember. I'll, I'll send it to you, don't <laughs> worry. We also have the expo coming up. Uh, the Marion County Chamber is going to be doing the horse expo in the downtown market. The original plan was to do the horse parade that uh, has been done every year for the last four years. And we're not doing that? The city of Ocala can't give any permits right now for large events Aww. and we had 20,000 people and 90 horses last year so, um, and the Budweiser Clydesdales. So we're going to have an equine industry expo instead here at the downtown market. That's going to be on March the 3rd. We'll have about 15 different horse breeds for you to learn about. We're going to have a special section that will be all for equine innovators, inventors and entrepreneurs that have products either that they're trying to launch or have just launched. Uh, we're in the process of trying to market uh, some kind of a new equine related product. We're going to use tax sale. We're going to have demos. We're going to have a Pasofino soundboard. Well, what happens with if you get 20,000 people to this? <laughs> then what? They won't. We'll be fine. <laughs> well, how do you know that? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Don't scare me like that. That'll teach them not to have a <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Uh, shout out for Good Apple Equine, who loaned me an absolutely beautiful shirt to show in my first Pasofino show last weekend. They have got a special Valentine's Day poster photo. They've got a first, second, and third prize. They have to be posted up by February 15th at noon. You can go and find Good Apple uh, on Facebook and show us your equine Valentine. So it's got to be a horse that you love. Two-legged, not four-legged. Uh, and the cutest photo, the first three... And the winners will actually be announced on February 22nd. And it looks like gift cards, first $25, second $15, and third $10 gift card to spend a good apple. They have a lovely selection of beautiful, very, very gently used items. Uh, all eyes are fixated on Charlatan as he heads into February 20th, $20 million Saudi Cup. $20 what? million. Dollars. Don't we wish we could win $20 million? I just want a million. I don't need 20. <laughs> just okay, one million will do me One million just fine. do you for a bit, right? <laughs> At least buy you a nice horse anyway. <laughs> uh, he seeks to stake his claim as the top dirt horse in the world, but of course he's got to run against the Brad Cox conditioned Breeders' Cup and Pegasus World Cup winner Nick Sko, who was actually trained here by Jackie and Nick Dumeric in the horse capital of the world. He just won the, uh, the Pegasus. So that'll be an interesting race to watch and see who wins that. Uh, on February 2nd, the organizers of the Land Rover Kentucky Three Day uh, announced they had to cancel the 2021 Five Star for some financial reasons without any spectators. It was very difficult to pull that off uh, without the income to run such a um, really important event. 
So now there is an opportunity to run the event. If equestrian events can raise $750,000. Huh? It is running. It is running. It is ru we have an eventer here <laughs> in the studio, like the top eventer here in the studio, who says it is running. So there's your, you heard that right from the horse's mouth. Uh, and we'll get more from her later because Liz Halliday Sharp is here in the studio to do a few segments with us and we're going to talk about eventing. And she has, for sure, the most up-to-date information. Um, so we'll hear that very, very soon. Um, a cute story I saw about the Super Bowl because we have to have a horse in the Super Bowl, you know what I mean? So a foal from Brookdale Farm in Kentucky whose name was Track Shill. Track uh, what? Track Shill, interesting name. Um, Shell. Shell. S-H-E-L-L. -E -L. Okay. He had a, a racing career that ended. He actually won his first race. He was retrained to be a police horse. Uh, oh, yeah, did you hear yeah, about yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. It's uh -huh. so cool. He actually helped with crowd control in, uh, in the preparations um, for, the, for the Super Bowl. And he did such a good job, they invited him to actually work the Super Bowl. Unfortunately, he did have a ligament injury in his front left. So he's home resting for 10 to 15 days. But he is still a huge star down in Naples and Fort Myers. He actually was on the Lee County uh, Sheriff's uh, Department. And so he is being celebrated massively on social media and on all the news channels in Naples and Fort Myers um, for being a real uh, a hero, being invited into the Super Bowl <laughs> lineup. Something. So he's a really big star now. And we love it when a former racehorse gets invited to the Super Bowl. So he's a media star. Actually, we love it when former racehorses do anything. Any, anything. 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 <laughs> so you're probably wondering if you're watching and you can see all of this. There's a lot going on up here, but there's a reason for all of that. Um, we you have can't actually, see it. No. You, there there it you is. go. Yeah. <laughs> we actually have a great lineup for the show. We have um, Cindy Lay here. She is from Exceptional Equestrian. She has a beautiful store at the New World Equestrian Center. And she has an incredible Kenyan collection here that we have a wonderful story, really heartwarming story to now tell you, you about. Now you can see it. Yes. So we're super excited to have her here with us and, uh, and hear that story. Then Liz Halliday Sharp is going to join us. We're going to talk eventing for a little while. And we're going to wrap it up with my funny Pasofino story that I think you'll really enjoy after uh, having only ridden a Pasofino once at the farm and for five minutes in a tornado watch at the Livestock Pavilion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then showing the next day and I just want to share that experience with you because it was just so neat and I want to mention a couple of um, people coming on board that we're going to be helping here with the show to promote their items as well and then we'll wrap it up we have wonderful little Jay Suarez who is one of the sweetest little 10 year old uh, girls you'll ever meet in your life who was uh, so sweet to lend me her horse Donna Blanca to show on Sunday so we're going to share that story from the United Pasofino farm before we wrap everything up. Paulette, how's your week? Great. I, I um, did my arena and it was looking great until the rain came and half the surface went down the hill again. So it's fixed today and it looks amazing. <laughs> half my yard went down the hill. So I, I can totally and utterly relate to that. that's what I've been that. working on is arenas so I can train, so. I wanted to do the reins, which you have. I see you have the breakaway reins yes, here, so I'm going to um, demonstrate those hopefully this week Good. and get a film on that. So. so Gigi just walked in, so that means it's time to watch the Horse Farms Forever video for a couple of minutes while we uh, swap people around and, uh, and get uh, Cindy ready to chat to you about Exceptional Equestrian. And I need to ask her what brand shirt I have on because I love it. We'll be back in just a few minutes on the Horse Talk Show. Is Stay that her us. shirt?
Hi, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. <laughs> You're something. Welcome back to the Horse Talk Show, <laughs> presented by Peterson and Smithy, Clyde Hospital in complete care. Thank you to Larson Hay, our broadcast sponsor, Idaho's finest alfalfa. I'm Louisa Barton in the studio with my crazy co-host, Bollette Stout, who Where is actually <laughs> wearing a dog collar. It's okay. Uh, Dr. Adam Chaos having a week off this week. I hope you're enjoying it, Dr. Chaos, and I hope you're not on an emergency call. Uh, in the studio, we have a very special guest, a new friend of ours, Cindy Lay, from Exceptional Equestrian. I love the word exceptional. <laughs> I use it as often as I possibly can, <laughs> and it fits so much with this incredible boutique at World Equestrian Center. I was in there the other day with Abby Slaven, who's actually uh, in the studio as an audience. Cheer us on. I'm uh, sitting over with Liz Halliday Sharp right now. Uh, and she took me in there the first time and I was blown away. And the second time I had a little bit longer to have a look around and oh my gosh, just beautiful, everything. I mean, gifts and incredible riding pants and jackets. And things, I'm gonna you mean gifts, things that people can buy me? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I'm gonna introduce Cindy and let her tell us a little bit about the store and then we're going to talk about this very special Kenyan collection and actually this is my belt right here which I was going to wear but I if I did wear it you wouldn't be able to see it so I'll just have to wear it on yes. camera when we're recording um, some interviews um, but absolutely beautiful quality. Um, Cindy tell us a little bit about your store uh, about Exceptional Equestrian. It's an equestrian lifestyle boutique. It's my tagline is that I specialize in absolutely nothing you need, just everything <laughs> that you want. I saw that. <laughs> um, I have everything from what you could ride with, um, bridges, um, shirts, shirts, boots, helmets. But we also have homeware. We have um, jewelry, beautiful jewelry, metal scarves, scarves socks, um, socks. You name it. Dog collars. We've, <laughs> 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 We've got it. So tell us the story about the Kenyan Connection because this is very special. It's very special to your store and when you told me the story I was just blown away. Yes, absolutely. I was a retailer of the Kenyan Collection. It was started by a woman named Joan Schultz who lived in Kenya um, and in witnessed the donation of uh, 14 head of ha cattle to the U.S. Embassy after 9-11. They gave that to the victims saying we're so sorry this happened to your country now cattle is their wealth and they they donated the, this this cattle so it changed Joan's life she said I've got to help these artisans get their beautiful work into the world so she started the Kenyan collection um, I was a dealer of hers and I loved the brand as much as she did and two years ago um, she asked me if I would buy the buy the Kenyan collection she wanted to um, retire and wanted it to be in good hands so I went to Kenya we started our own um, workshop of our own we have se now we have 70 mamas that beat exclusively for us um, we have George the buckle guy who will go into the junkyards find scrap metal melt it down into his own molds and create our buckles um, oh, wow. the That's goat the the leather the, the cow and the goat are all sourced ethically um, we pay our mamas fair fair pay with fair employment practices it's not a charity we wanted to give them their money directly so that they can use it on a on a child on their education on their community um, I have goose pimples right now I love that um, and we hope we were hoping that 2020 we would get to 100 mamas um, but we're a little shy of that because of COVID um, they do have to travel anywhere from two to six hours to get to us um, if it's a young mama who wants to work for us um, so we will she's making my belt right now look. she's making that yes <laughs> she um, they will train them um, we'll give them training um, we'll send them home with assignments they can come back and if it's not quite right we'll still do training well they can sit we have a workshop that's big enough they like to sit on the floor and that's how they beat um, we bought them solar lighting as you can see there um, they had oil lanterns burning and it would be horrible for their lungs so um, we feel really good about this opportunity they can beat at night um, the kids can do homework there's George the buckle guy um, and there's one of his molds that he um, creates our buckles out of Isn't that amazing yeah wow. yeah it's so incredible yeah thank you now now what does this do for this community I mean obviously it sets a different standard for them financially it helps them the community to thrive but what else do you see I mean there must be a lot of positives that you see coming from this absolutely one of the communities closest to Nairobi is where we're based out of um, has built a, a lovely school and it's 
due to the funds that they were able to earn for themselves. Um, some of the communities that are further out into the bush um, will have to hike two or three miles to get water. And so now they've been able to buy water containers that the water will run off their roofs into these water containers so they don't have to travel so far for water. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So this yeah. is this is their work. This, this is their work. This yeah. is their work. This, this is, is their, their work. Yes. Now this, the designs, is this unique to Kenya? Is this unique to them as a tribe or as yeah, a Yeah, it's a good question. Society? How do they choose, like, how to design them? This design I brought on purpose. These are all primary colors. Um, and it's, um, this is a very typical pattern that you would see if you went to Kenya. Um, that they wear, that they that they wear, that they bead, um, as well as this is called this this is called primary. This is called earth. Yeah. Um, this is the colors of the earth. The these patterns are things that we will give them the beads and say um, we want circles, we want um, designs, but you have artistic freedom. You can do what mm. you want to with um, something like this one with the moonbeam. Um, the pattern is always going to be very predictable. So we mm. have we have thirty seven collections. Um, this is one of our newest ones. It's called Arani's Dots. I love uh, that. Just it's playful mm -hmm. fun. I um, think my dog Aries would look lovely in that. I think but, so too. But <laughs> these colors or the beading, was that unique to these people? Yeah, so the colors are symbolic. Um, red is the blood of the, the animal that's given their life. White is um, from the milk that feeds them. Um, the browns are from for earth. Green is for the grass that feeds their cattle. Blue is for the skies above. And so all of their beading has symbology. Mm -hmm. um, and then how they wear their beads will tell you if they're married, um, if they're wealthy, okay. if they mm -hmm. have children, if they're about to be married. It, it gives it tells a story about who oh. they are and what they're about. Mm -hmm. Now tell us about these. Are these what do these are just little key rings. We have bracelets. We have key rings. We have purse straps. Um, Ooh, so neat. Yeah. Um, these are incredible. And didn't you have one of these to commemorate something? What yes. Kind of this one is the, is this we donated funds to um, the, the Babington collection. Oh, that's uh, right. Yes. yes. And so we have. I mean, what, what does that mean? Kevin Babington, Kevin Babington had, had a horrible. A terrible accident. <gasps> yes. And so he's, um, it's for spinal research. His foundation's okay. for spinal research. Okay. Which and so um, we have belts, dog collars, bracelets in the Babington collection as well. In those colors. In, the, in this design. That's mm -hmm. his design because that's, yes. um, that's probably the Irish colors, yes, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So okay. that's, yeah. um, that's really, I think that's really so you incredible. So you could order these at, in your colors if you wanted yes, to? Yes, absolutely. So you could order your belt? We could do custom belts, yes. So, yeah. and with that too, is you could order a belt buckle that would go with your belt? Um, is there such thing as a beaded buckle? No, not yet. But I do, there, with the exceptional equestrian, one of my... Um, partners that I w work with um, does beaded um, or actually blinged out um, buckles that look actually darling with these I could imagine like doing gorgeous. these into a buckle too mm -hmm. and matching neck yes. collars. Yeah. So I <laughs> do neck collars. <laughs> so funny. So tell me, um, th this is an amazing, it, incredible story and, and we shared a photo <laughs> of the wall of all the, mm -hmm. the Kenyan collection that you have. and. And when you told, as soon as you told me the story, I said, this has got to be on the show because this is just, uh, it's one of those things that, you know, you can, you can go into a store, you're going in basically to buy equestrian gifts and clothing and things like that, and you can actually come out with something that's changing a whole community. Yes, so, absolutely. Um, I just think, to me, that just touched my heart and that said so much about the horse world to me and so much about what you're doing and, and that's just, that's I amazing. I love things oh. with meaning. Thank you. I, I do. Too. Yeah, you too. And Gigi too. just came in. So do we have the website for Equestrian, uh, Exceptional Equestrian? Do we have that? It's a probably simple, like equestri ExceptionalEquestrian.com. Yes, yes, there it is. Look at that. <laughs> ExceptionalEquestrian.com. You can get more information. Or buy Arena 3 uh -huh. at World Equestrian Center. You can pop in, and Cindy's probably going to be there most of the time uh, working. She has wonderful help in there as well. And I just want to thank Abby for taking me in there. And having a chance to hear this story and meet you. Thank you. Thank and you. I, I'm wearing her shirt, by the way, right now, which is gorgeous as well. So you can find lots more things just There's like this. There's some really, really exceptional clothing in there. They're exceptional. Just, it's exceptional. <laughs> Gigi's going like this. We'll be back on the Horse Talk <laughs> Show in just a few minutes. Thank you. Stay with us. <laughs> this show is presented by Peterson & Smith Equine Hospital, one of the top equine hospitals in the USA with services including ambulatory, surgery, sports medicine, reproduction, and with doctors on call 24 hours a day. 
Check them out now at petersonsmith.com. The opinions of the hosts and guests on the Horse Talk Show are not necessarily that of Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital. This show is brought to you in part by Summit Joint Performance, promoting a healthy, thick synovial fluid, decreasing inflammation in the joints and improving the cushioning properties of the cartilage pads. All age horses can benefit from Summit Joint Performance. Our Facebook broadcast sponsor is Larson Farms. The Larson Farms mission is simple, to be the leader in quality and value. Richard, owner of Larson Farms, is committed to a positive attitude, integrity, dedication, quality and teamwork. Larson Farms is committed to being your supplier of Idaho's finest alfalfa, a complete line of mixed and grass hay. Larson Farms, Idaho's finest alfalfa. Welcome to the Kenyon Collection. I wanted to introduce you to our caller room and also give you a little background. The Kenyon Collection was started in 2004 by Joan Schultz, who had lived and worked in Kenya for years. It became a reality when Joan witnessed the donation of 14 head of cattle from the Maasai to the U.S. Embassy for victims of 9-11. The Kenyon Collection was born out of her desire to show appreciation for their gift. The business grew, the mamas created more and more exquisite work, and as a retail customer of the collection for years, I developed a passion for this very special line of products. As a result, when Joan asked if I was interested in carrying on the line, I said absolutely. Now my husband, Stuart, and I own the business and continue to showcase the work of these incredible artisans. We now have our own group of 67 artisans who produce slowly for us. We are able to attract the best beaters with fair pay and fair employment practices. You, our customer, gets the benefit of the highest quality beaded product on the market. When the mamas get their assignments, they can travel anywhere from two to six hours. They live out in the bush with no running water or electricity. We have bought them solar lighting so they could beat at night and the kids can do homework. Um, in the past, they would have oil lanterns burning, which would be horrible for their lungs. So we feel really good about giving them this opportunity. We have George the Buckle Guy who will actually go out into junkyards find scrap metal and melt it down into his own molds and create our buckles and hardware for us. We have Sam who will cut each individual strip of leather for us and chalk where the mamas are to be. He also will go source all the leather for us and find the best leather out there. Um, we have Helen who counts all the beads. She speaks English, Swahili, and Ma. So she's able to communicate with the mamas on what their assignments are going to be. She also will count out all the beads for them. Everything sourced in Kenya. Uh, the beads are Czechoslovakian glass beads. However, we do buy from a local bead store there. And everything is sourced ethically. The cow and goat are all uh, meat byproducts that are fed to families. The Kenyan collection not only offers dog collars, but we have expanded the line to include dog collars, leashes. We do purse straps bracelets, key rings, we have belts. We hope you will fall in love with our collection as much as we do. Asante Sana. Hi, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. Welcome back to the Horse Talk Show presented by Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care. I'm Louisa Barton. Thank you very much to Larson Hay, our broadcast sponsor, Idaho's finest alfalfa. In the studio, co-host Paulette Stout. Have you still got your dog collar on? No, I haven't. I've kept it off. <laughs> it doesn't look the same, it on. Does it? I know, I you need I to put need it back it. on. <laughs> um, and also, I have a, a really, really special guest in the studio. I'd love to have her back and have the show for quite some time. She's actually USEA's uh, Rider of the Year for 2020. That is Liz Halliday Sharp. Lovely Hi. to have you here with us. <laughs> Thanks Thank for you. having me. Yes. <laughs> actually, the, you know how Facebook pops up your old pictures? The other day, it popped up a picture of you and I standing on the back deck of the Ocala Jockey Club with the microphones. That's right. That was fun. Yes, it was. <laughs> that was, was that a, a like, year ago? No. Oh, no. That three, was probably, three, probably, right? Three, maybe, years ago. Yeah, it was a yeah, while ago. Probably yeah. three years ago. And I said, oh, look. <laughs> and then Renee Lane. Dear friend Renee Lovely Lane. Renee. I love her too. She's amazing. Um, actually texted me and said, you know, you really should have... Have you ever heard of Liz Halliday Sharp? I said, <laughs> who? No, I didn't. I was like, are you kidding? 
Does anybody not know her? Oh, so well, thank you to really Renee, and we have to give her a plug for her wonderful um, aqua training spa that our horses go to. It's all off the, time. the charts. It's I incredible. It. Landmarks Farm yes. recommending it to everybody. It's amazing. I I actually was there when um, how many times did you Zoo Bear that? was there. Uh, sometimes my girls are there like four times a week because we have a lot of horses, but it depends on the week. But is it yeah. a, is it an underwater treadmill? Uh, yeah, it's it's a water treadmill. Yeah. Now it's let me ask you something. How do the feet stay up on that when they're wet? Well, oh, there's really good grip on there. Actually, you'd be amazed. But no, the actual foot itself does it affect the texture no. of the foot? No, no, they're not in there for that long. They're yeah, it's it's, not it's very a chilled long, is it? um, a chilled system as well, which is fabulous, and so they're in there for about chilled. twenty minutes. Yeah and different mm -hmm. levels depending on the horse. It's great. Wonderful for core strength. All it kinds really of things. is. Yeah. Zubair was there, Zubair Manini, when I was there okay. and he put two horses in and I was watching and I was like, oh, it's really impressive. It's really amazing. Mm -hmm. Great, uh, great exercise for the horses. So um, Liz, you're very unique, originally from mm -hmm. California, uh, primarily now based between Ocala and Lexington. Um, we yep. love having you here, <laughs> of course. Um, and you've dedicated really your entire life to two international sporting careers. Um, one I wished I had done because the police will tell you here that I'm <laughs> very good at racing cars uh, and, uh, and horsepower was certainly, has certainly been your cup of tea on uh, two sides there. Uh, having been a, a formal professional racing driver in sports car and GT endurance disciplines, you're actually like the number one Le Mans driver, right? Female Le Mans driver? Uh, I was the, right? yeah, in the American Le Mans series, mm -hmm. yes. yes. I did race at Le Mans as well. So you didn't was, try and beat cool. the British at that though, huh? <laughs> well, I did. I, I raced everywhere. I raced all over the world, did actually. You? I did a British uh, GT series as well, in fact. So, yeah, I did a, did a lot of traveling and a, a lot of crazy for a while. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. So yeah. you obviously like speed and power. Yeah, <laughs> mm, I think so, yeah. <laughs> You've been riding since you were eight? Yep, I about think. that, yeah. Uh, and you started off pony clubbing? I started off actually doing hunter jumpers, believe it or not, but only for a short period of time because um, I was sort of riding the old least quarter horse down the road, which surprisingly <laughs> didn't do all that well <laughs> back then. Um, but yeah, then I, I got my first taste of pony club when I was probably about 10 years old and um, never looked back. Went cross country and thought, this sounds good to me. So Fine, yes. <laughs> away fine. we went. So <laughs> what made you really fall in love with eventing over other sports? I know the cross country is... Mm. Um, I love everything about eventing. I love the, the training of the three different disciplines. I think that's really cool. And just the partnership you build with the horse from that is um, it's very, very special. I think, I think slightly different to any other sport in my opinion because they really are like tri the triathletes of our sport, you know, and they're, um, it's, a, it's a really special sort of horse that can compete at the highest level of eventing. And um, I love the, the different sort of all day, every day work of it and doing something different all the time. And, you know, working on that fitness side of it too. And um, of course I love, I love adrenaline and speed, but, um, right. but I like the focus of the other phases too. So I don't know, it's definitely my thing. <laughs> so I, I've always thought of it as the, as the toughest equestrian sport, as you mentioned, because you've got to be able to do all three. You've, and just for our listeners who, I, I regularly hear that people who don't necessarily own horses or have ever owned horses, actually watch and listen. I didn't know that until I got my vehicle wrapped by Loco Graphics. And now I get stopped every time I go to the store. Like, every time I go anywhere, I get stopped by people, a mixture of people from people who ride and have horses to some people who've never had a horse. And um, actually, this week, two people, I don't know if they're listening right now, but Marty and Greg both stopped me in the parking lot um, to say, I never miss your show. They listen on the sky on Saturday morning. And so for them, for Marty and Greg, we're going to do what is eventing, because we do have some beginners. Okay. So there are three parts to it. Uh, and Liz will tell you there is cross country, show jumping, and dressage. So you have to be good at all three, which is what makes it the triathlon. And that's what On makes the same it horse. so tough. This yes. is what a lot of people who don't know eventing ask. You're right. say, same horse. Is it, and you know, do you get a different horse for each phase? Nope, you have to train the same horse. Um, and obviously at the, the pinnacle of the sport at Five Star, um, like we have at Land Rover, Kentucky, is um, the true sort of what was the old three-day event format where we do the dressage first and then you do the cross country and then the horse show jumps on the last day. So that's the real test of fitness and endurance. That certainly is, isn't it? Yeah. And, and I, I think to me a difficult part, and, and you know, I haven't evented since I was a little girl and then it was really low level, really low level. Um, but to me it seems like having a horse that you know, 
can be quiet enough to, to be beautiful and calm in dressage and then go out and be fired up to clear those sizes, jumps in a five star has got to be quite something to have that horse trained to change horse, his mind. The gray horse, what breed is he? Well, I have lots of gray horses. No, You've been looking no, at about five different ones. <laughs> one particular mm -hmm. one that was just in the dressage. That, uh, that one was uh, probably Cooley Quicksilver. He's one of my best horses. He's uh, an Irish bred horse. It's actually by a, a sire called Womanizer, which is a, a very, good very good jumping sire. Um, and he's a, he's a very quirky person. Um, he's, a, he's a tricky horse, but he's very talented. He's one of my best horses. So. Um, yeah. And that's Cooley Stormwater we're seeing there. He's a, a gorgeous eight-year-old owned by a really lovely woman, Debbie Palmer. And what um, is he? He is also, um, he was bred in Ireland, but so many horses now, most of my horses have come out of Ireland because I, I like them to so grow up Irish, Irish but Irish there's so much different, no, like there's so much they? different breeding now. That's the thing is you'll have a little bit of, you know, maybe Holsteiner or, um, you know, the so Dutch horse or something like, mixed with different, you so know, Irish breeding. it's like warm breeding. blood, but there's a little bit more, would there, were there Irish horses more like a thoroughbred type or... Well, we're always trying to find a horse with enough blood in it so that it can do the gallop, you know, the galloping and the cross country. Mm -hmm. um, of course, your show jumping and dressage types wouldn't um, necessarily need quite as much blood as, as some of our horses do. But um, for me, I like the horses when they've grown up in Ireland. I just think they, they learn to be good tough well, horses more, and yeah, they, you know. They hills and yeah, exactly. You know, I was going to say that it's a lot like in, in England racing. Um, horses, they go across the heath and up the hills and down mm -hmm. the dales yeah. and, mm -hmm. and they really train, in my opinion, more naturally, you know, than, than they, uh, they do have to do a lot of hilly work and I think that, that they get a more do, do natural now, now foundation. Do, do these horses, are these horses a little taller than the average thoroughbred? I see a different build in some of the ones that you have. They are a little, they're a little longer, a little longer knocked, but yet they still have more depth to them? Um, honestly, I, uh, I have eventers that range from 15.3 to 17.2, so wow. <laughs> they're all different heights. Um, well, it's more... Well, 17.2 would be unusual, wouldn't it? Not necessarily, no. I mean, that would be taller, but, uh, you know, there's been plenty of really outstanding event horses that um, I see the boys. have been tall. Yes, and here's some of my, my wonderful <laughs> owners. I'm Robin Cristocino from Ocala Horse Properties. And, of course, Renee Lane, who we talked about earlier, oh, is also uh, you know, one of my really fabulous tell owners. You can't really Renee. <laughs> yeah, no, she, she missed that photo, sadly. We um, she owns part of this wonderful horse, Cooley Quicksilver, and also um, Cooley Be Cool and Cooley Moonshine. So, we um, just got the sign from Gigi. But the good news is we got Liz with us for another segment. So <laughs> stay with us on the Horse Talk Show. We'll be back in just a few minutes. With those Irish horses. Yes. This show is brought to you and bought by Horse Boxes USA, the newest and most advanced way to safely transport your horses in style. Horse Boxes USA comes standard with a backup camera, horse cabin camera, and dual fans. Visit them at JJ Tax Shop on Highway 40 in Ocala or online at horseboxesusa.com. This show is brought to you in part by DAC Vitamins and Minerals of Florida. All horses need a solid immune system, excellent joint support, a healthy gut, and DAC has all the vitamins and minerals they need with the NASC stamp of approval. So like them on Facebook now or go to feeddac.com. DAC, it makes a world of difference. At All In Removal, we offer the best service and highest quality products. Whether you need fine shavings, large flake, a custom blend, or even bag shavings, we have the bedding and removal services you need. We use only reliable late model trucks and our team of drivers are courteous, respectful, and hardworking. We train our staff to the high standards we are famous for and our customer service team prides themselves on being experts on our products and an advocate for our customers, helping them to maximize the value they receive. If quality and service matter, give us a try today. Are you ready to get loco? At Loco Graphics, every dollar matters to provide your ideas brought to life. Loco Graphics strives to get your message across and impact your customers, offering logo design, vehicle wraps, business cards, banners and more. Make your business shine and showcase who you are with nothing but the highest quality materials. The difference is in the details. Impact your potential customers with Loco Graphics. Like them on Facebook now and find them on the web at locographics.com. 
Welcome back to the Horse Talk Show. You never heard of a talking horse? Well, listen to this. <laughs> with your host, Louisa Barton. What does it feel like to be in love with a horse? Presented this hour by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy store. Now, here's your pretty, pretty Louisa Barton. You're fab, you're switched on, you're a bit of all right. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back to the second half of the Horse Talk Show, presented by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience. Thank you to Larson Farms, our broadcast sponsor, Idaho's finest alfalfa. I'm Louisa Barton, in the studio with Paulette Stout, my co-host, Top Equestrian, and also USEA Rider of the Year. I want to keep saying inventor, but it was USEA, that's it, 2020. Liz Halliday, Shaw. quick shout out for Pulse uh, Center of Ocala, if you're an equestrian and uh, you have body aches like Paulette, you need to go <laughs> down to Pulse Center of Ocala and uh, visit them. Tell them you'd like to have a little demonstration. Check it out. If you can get in there and get treatment, you will feel different. Aches and pains, inflammation, anything that ails you, um, Pulse Center of Ocala can give you the therapy that will help you. Most especially equestrians, you need to start taking care of yourself as well as you take care of your horse. <laughs> uh, taking it back to, um, to Liz, it was kind of like the cherry on the top. I don't know what's going on in the studio <laughs> over next door. Something uh, rowdy. I know, it's rowdy. <laughs> Perhaps they have the drinks cabinet in there. Ah, <laughs> that's the problem. That's the problem. And we got it. <laughs> so when you uh, were found out you were USEA Rider of the Year for 2020, it was your first full season back in, right after your first full season back in the US. Uh, must have made you feel pretty good, right? Yeah, I mean, I knew I was pretty pretty close, and I, I thought I was going to be able to do it, but it came down to the very last event, and Boyd Martin was hot on my heels. So, um, yeah, it was a real Explain thrill. Explain what it takes to be that. Points is how it used to all Points. be, is just how many um, top placings you have on, you know, lots of different horses. And that it's now changed. The system has changed. It's gone to the way the FEI does things now, which I still can't even totally figure out. So it was the last year, actually, out of... I think it was 60 years or something they did it that way where it was just purely based on points but it was super exciting because I was the first woman in 39 years to win Rider of the Year which is pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, oh wow we're upside down events. Wow. That's exciting. Oh my goodness. Yeah, wow that's, hey, that's listen, a skill. That no. is actually really and impressive. And that's staying on. I know. And really we really event on the moon it appears. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's, <laughs> that's better. better. That went up the right so way. So you have points on the actual overall placings in an event that you no, have. the whole year. It's the, the whole, whole season. The it's whole just season how many age. good results you have. You get points for each each result, for instance. So, you know, I suppose I how guess many I events won did more. You go to to win that horse of the, the uh, horse I, Well, I had a lot of different horses at various different events. So I actually have no idea how many events I did. <laughs> but I had a lot of different horses it's competing like when throughout you the when year. You lose count of how many so horses you, you have. So you rode more than one horse at each different event. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Various different levels. Um, various mm -hmm. things. For instance, mm -hmm. this is Plantation Field um, Beautiful. in Pennsylvania. That was my first trip there ever, which was exciting. That was what was so uh, odd for me this year because I've spent nearly 20 years competing in Britain, um, living there, and um, this was my first summer ever competing on the East Coast um, in 2020. Mm -hmm. So a lot of places that have been going for a long time that people knew, like Plantation Field, um, I'd never competed there before. Um, so it was a really exciting opportunity. It was even better to, to win the four star there. So this is your stadium jumping, but what level is this? This is a four star competition, so um, a short format. So it means that the um, we did the show jumping first, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, not first, but before the cross country. So the cross country was the last phase. And the height of these fences? <coughs> um, about a meter thirty. So yeah, um, this is at Virginia. This would be the. Uh, this is Cooley Be Cool, who's now at three-star level, but this was his first long format two-star, which he won. Um, so this was in the summer right after the lockdown. And um, what's the breed of him? Um, he is an Irish horse as well. He's been bred in Ireland, but he has a, um, he's actually by sire called Fortunus, which I believe is a Holsteiner sire. And how old is he there? He was seven, so he's eight this year, and he's mm -hmm. going to move up to advanced quite soon. I think this will be a, a real top, top horse. I'm very excited about him. He's owned by the Monster Partnership, who is um, Renee Lane, Rob Decino, Chris Decino, and my mom, Debbie Halliday. And um, I think he is going to be uh, one of our, hopefully, a team horse one day for me. And um, 
you, they've about, had them a year now, which is very exciting. Talk about that a little bit. Like, I know you've got a wonderful set of grooms. Your owners are awesome. Obviously, I'm, I'm personally friends with Renee. I've been Thanksgiving at her house. She's lovely. Her and She's her husband the best, yeah. yeah. And, and I'm Joe. in love with her dogs. Shout out for Joe as oh, well. Yes. <laughs> Joe is wonderful. And the dogs. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Lovely, They're lovely. Gosh, she's, she's amazing. Um, so that has to be a big part of your success as well. I mean, obviously, clearly you are an incredible equestrian, that's proven, but uh, you certainly put your heart and soul and, and all your effort into this, but it has to make a difference who you have as your your grooms your and your owners. Oh my gosh, the team is, is everything. It's like they say, there is no I in team. That's definitely true. Um, absolutely, my owners have I mean, they've really changed my life to have the support I've had from them and, and being able to have such a strong team of horses now. I don't think I, well, I know I couldn't have done it without them. Um, and to have their support, and I always say it was my dream to have um, great owners who are also great friends. And that's what we've now achieved, which is really, it's the icing on, on top. And I have mm -hmm. such a wonderful crew of uh, girls at home. I think I've got some of the best girls I've ever had working for me right now. and. Claire Tiscos is my head groom at the moment, and she works very, very hard, and um, we are fighting together to get ourselves to Tokyo, me and that whole team. So, and it, it really is the team effort that gets you there. It's, it's that was the girls behind question. the scenes working the horses, you know, helping to keep the horses in top shape, and especially for eventers, we travel a lot, and it's, it's so a lot for them. So they're working the horses at home that you're not traveling I, with? If I'm not there, then yes, I have a, a, a few girls that, that work very, very hard and, and help me keep them going. I try and ride as many as I can when I'm at home. I like to do all my training myself as right. much as I can. But, of course, they are keeping the horses in, in top condition and looking after them and keeping the barn running. And we have nearly 20 horses in the barn right now, so it's, it's busy enough when we're out right. competing a lot. Gosh, incredible. Are so you competing every weekend or...? Pretty much now, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much now until forever at the moment. Now our season has gotten up and running and yeah. So talk to us about Tokyo. Well, it's, has it's to be the goal a, um, this year. It's the only goal, really. It's the big goal, the really big goal. That's um, the bucket list. It's all we're thinking about right now. It's, it is So you have so many on. horses that you're riding at this time that you would take you there, is, or is there one only particular? No, I really have a, one main horse, De Niro Z, is, is my real Z. hope, and then I'm hoping to have Cooey Quicksilver as, as a backup. He's a slightly younger horse, but that would be, uh, that's my real hope. And then uh, the, uh, some of the other horses, I think, are, are real contenders for the next World Equestrian Games, the next Pan American Games, and then the next Olympic Games. So um, I'm hoping to be on a, a lot of teams for years to come. That's, mm -hmm. my, that's what I'm working towards, and, and be there supporting the USA to win medals. The longevity of a horse like this, what is it, five years, 10 years? Um, if you look after them, I think they can go on until they're you know, 17, 18, some horses till they're 19 or 20. So they'll um, start competing <coughs> at five, approximately? Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of adventures will start around five, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't start them earlier than that, because I think the four-year-olds are real babies still, and yep. mm -hmm. they need the I time. think, yeah, I think they need some time, and maybe a few little shows for them, but I think as an eventer, I don't start them until they're about five. Yeah, there's a lot going on for, oh, a, for, a, yeah. for a really young horse, yeah. a lot to learn, a lot to take in. And but a horse like De Niro Z, he didn't start eventing until he was seven. I got him as a seven-year-old, he'd done almost nothing, and within three years, he did his first five-star. So mm -hmm. some horses are just naturally gifted mm -hmm. and and they find their way quicker than others. I'm, I'm a big believer in the horses so will tell you when they're ready. Yeah, he's around 10 years old. No, he's 13 this year 13 now. now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And he's going strong. Yeah, he's Strong. he's great touching wood right now. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's feeling great, and um, he's he's a wonderful horse. And um, he was uh, the first the first horse owned by Ocala Horse Properties in Robin Chris Casino. So um, wow. they're they're very attached to him too. And um, we've got wow. big goals together for that boy. That's for sure. It's exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. Favorite horse ever. Uh, I, d I mean, too hard to say. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of favorites, but I'm I'm. I'm pretty good friends with De Niro, so we're, we're pretty tight right now. He's, yeah, <laughs> he's pretty far up you've there. You've been together for a bit. <laughs> yeah, indeed. And indeed. had a lot of success. So um, tell us about the, uh, about, the, about the Land Rover. Well, I had to call you up on that because I, I was hearing you talking about it. I was like, hey, it's back on. 
I, I, <laughs> good. That's why we love having you here. So yeah, there was a, a huge fundraising we effort after that. we heard it had been canceled. I didn't and know they um, had achieved it. That's good. Yeah, and I, I knew a few days ago that there was a possibility they would achieve that, and um, it turns out they have. So, uh, which is absolutely wonderful for the sport. Um, more than anything, um, it's it's what our sport needs. We need to not lose such a fundamental huge event in our country. This has obviously been going on since 1978. Um, it was Rolex Kentucky, for those that knew it before. It's recently been taken over by Land Rover as the title sponsor. So it's oh, wow. very important event. Those of you who can go to the Kentucky Five Star, you um, probably can't now unless we can get the COVID pandemic under control more. However, it will be on NBC, it will be on um, the USCF network. There are lots of ways that you can still support the riders that are competing there um, and support all the horses and still be involved in that event so that you can go back and be a spectator next year. Love that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stay with us. Uh, Gigi just entered the room and she's in charge. That means it's break time. So we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Stay with us on the horse talk show. So it was, it, what was it before Land Rover? Rolex. Rolex. Yeah, it was a title sponsor. Ian, what are you doing? What cost it? <laughs> this show is brought to you in part by Seminole Feed Stores, family owned since 1934. Manufacturing fixed formula horse feeds with mindful monitoring and quality ingredients right here in Ocala in an all natural, non medicated feed mill. Seminole Feed, simply the world's best and safest feed. Like them on Facebook now or find them at SeminoleFeed.com. Nirvana, Ocala's premier medical spa, is leading the way in great skin with all the newest in treatment options, offering prejuvenation for younger clients and rejuvenation for all ages. Nirvana knows you want to look your very best, but we've all seen people with the telltale signs of too much work. We want you to look like you, just better, brighter and younger, with all the newest and best in technology and all in the most beautiful surroundings. Like Nirvana Medical Spa on Facebook and find them on the web at nirvanamedicalspa.com. Become a better, brighter and younger you. The Equine Performance Center Ocala with numerous success stories and featuring the most advanced equine conditioning and rehab equipment available in the world today is striving to be the best in the nation. Find them on the web at epcrehab.com and like them on Facebook now. This show is brought to you in part by TT Distributors, dedicated to bringing their customers the largest selection of quality horse supplements, products, and farrier supplies in Florida at affordable prices. Also online at ttdistributors.com. Hi, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. Welcome back to the Horse Talk Show, presented by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience. Thank you to Larson Farms, our broadcast sponsor, Idaho's finest alfalfa. I hope you can hear me talking. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Ian said that at the end of the last segment, my mouth was moving, but there's nothing coming out. <laughs> Imagine, Imagine that. that. <laughs> in the studio was Paulette Stout, my co-host. <laughs> who is in fine form today. <laughs> I think it was the dog collar that did it. We've I not been drinking. Oh, <laughs> the dog that was when she awesome. told us, I've worn dog collars before, you know. <laughs> and I said, that's just TMI. Uh, our special guest in the studio <laughs> this week is USEA Rider of the Year, Liz Halliday Sharp. She is personal friends, but on the show before. We've interviewed her before. We've loved it. Uh, it's great to have her back. And we've talked about the horses and competing and uh, growing up with the horses and uh, pony club and everything else. So now we're going to ask her about driving fast cars. <laughs> Do you still drive fast cars? Well, my husband recently got an RS5 Audi, oh. and um, I might have driven it a little faster than I should have the other day. But I try not to drive fast cars on the road because I'll get into trouble. So I, know, I <laughs> actually only had a Mini Cooper for about two years, and but I had the six-speed turbo. Uh, pulled over quite <laughs> a year. I couldn't help it. It was like, mm, mm, you know, it was just yeah. amazing. So I drive an SUV for that reason. I know. Or the dually. I know. <laughs> I'd have to be in like something like that's tall, that's, you know, like a truck or something because give me yeah. a little sports car and I, I have a lead foot. But <laughs> I inherited it from my dad, fair and square. I grew up in England and you know, you've lived there, so you know what it's like. Everybody drives like madmen there. 
and we had to try and little less now we have all of the speed, the cameras, speed cameras there it's no I fun know. at all yeah my dad would have not boring done that. <laughs> but we had a triumph stag convertible and he used to take me to school in it in the morning on the m1 oh wow 140 miles an hour you would never get away with that in England now. It's so boring with Is all the speed boring? cameras. Really? Yes, they're everywhere. Yeah, I'm the only one that doesn't no. drive fast. I don't drive fast. But I drove tractor trailers, so. Yeah. You know. Fair enough. It's addicted to speed is a bad thing, you know. It, it just, it's, it's a bad thing. I, I love <laughs> driving fast. So yeah. that has to have been a very exciting career for you. Yeah, I miss it a lot. Obviously, um, my dad was into racing. He um, and that's how you got. Involved. Yeah, my dad was a uh, was an instructor as well for a lot of years. So he taught me to drive and um, taught me to race and all that. And we shared a car together so when I was a teenager. So that was really what fun. What is something that you would teach somebody about speed driving? What is a key to that? Oh my gosh! Don't well, crash. This, it's very different. In Don't the, crash. I'd say the track is very different to driving on the road too. There's a lot of so different one, skills so involved. One, one skill, one thing. Don't crash. <laughs> For just if you're trying to drive really fast. Yeah. <laughs> just it's. Do you know what? Well, driving really fast is all about maintaining the the weight shift and the balance in the car. It's a little bit like horse riding. You're trying to do that the best. And um, yep, yeah, and uh, that in itself is what makes you go fast is well and you know how they always say this the straight the fastest way between two places is a straight line okay. well that's basically what you're trying to achieve is to maximize every straight bit that you have so you're mm -hmm. trying to do the best job through each corner to maximize your straightaways so to speak that makes <laughs> sense right but you know it's all physics isn't it yeah. a little bit like horse because riding too. i guess a, a <laughs> turn really is a series of straight lines exactly so you're entering each turn to see how you can maximize your exit and how to not scrub speed away. So what would be an example of the worst thing you could do that would create an accident? Oh my god, there's lots of things you could do to create an accident when you're going fast. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Don't drive um, like Louisa. Yeah, maybe maybe don't drive faster than your skills allowed. There you go. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, Which that's means it. I stay at 60. Yeah. <laughs> There you what go, kids. You heard it here. Stay yeah, follow the speed limit. Right. <laughs> so tell us who who is the person who influenced you the most okay. in uh, in in your in your training to be an inventor. Who had the most influence on you? So probably the person that had the biggest impact on me when I was growing up was William Fox William Pitt. Fox yeah, Pitt. because I went to work for him. I left. I was going to school at um, UCSB Santa Barbara, and um, I went to do a year away which sort of merged its way into a whole lot of years in England but um, yeah I spent um, sort of three years ish based with him I worked for him for a bit and then I just um, had my horse there and I would ride anything that he'd give me and and I learned so much about horsemanship and um, what it takes to to help get a top eventer fit and and just so many different skills that I still use today and I still respect William immensely. We get on really well, and he's he's a really top guy, full stop. And um, it's I'd say that's probably I hold on to a lot of that because he is such a wonderful horseman, and mm -hmm. he's always treated horses as individuals. And that's kind of my my big training thing is um, treat your horses as individuals because they're all different. So if you go to it that way, and you can always find your way in to help your horse be its best as to who they are as an individual and that's I think that's so really important. Do you do cross training yourself? At the moment I just mainly ride because I don't have time to do much else so um, <laughs> yeah we're pretty quite a lot of yeah we're, pre we're pretty pretty busy that's why I've come in here scuzzy in my britches still. <laughs> <laughs> you look spotlessly clean I can really hope to be that clean when I'm in the barn. Spotlessly I, did, I did change clean. my shirt only because my cat had rolled up and down me right before I left. <laughs> but, um, yes, yeah. I rarely leave my house without animal hair stuff yeah, all over exactly. me. So wearing black exactly. is terrible. Usually <coughs> when I wear black, I'm, I'm just covered in dog and cat hair. So <laughs> I roll into there bed at night. It's just exactly. part of life. Um, um, one tip for a young uh, eventer who's starting now that if you w went back and did anything differently or if you could give them like one really good, strong tip for success, because obviously you've, you've made it to the top. <laughs> Um, I would say just never be afraid of hard work and to put yourself out there and, and be willing to go and if, if that's your dream be willing to go and be a working student you know go and 
put yourself in the trenches and, and work harder than you ever thought you could work in your life because I did not know what hard work was until I went to England and I was pretty wet behind the ears and I was actually not really any good at being a groom. I was too slow and <laughs> oh, I was, I was pretty useless, but I tried, really? but I'll tell you what, I was so slow I used to run back and forth from wherever the muck heap between the yard because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm just not fast enough. And you know, those days are kind of gone now, what we did 20 years ago where you would work a 14 hour day, six days a week and not complain about it. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was- uh, or You wanted to complain, you just came oh, to I'm not gonna say I loved it because it, <laughs> it was really hard, but it was character building. And I have yeah. to say it, it made me who I am now and it's made me the worker that I am now because I wasn't as hardy when I was young. And I think that's what I would say to anybody is if you really want it, be prepared to work really hard, be prepared to get shut down, be prepared for it to not be a good day every day. And um, <laughs> just bust your guts if you want it. It's, it's just <laughs> what it is. I think of Tick Maynard's book. <coughs> really? Yes, Tick Maynard's book, uh, In the Middle of the Horseman. Yeah. It gives you like the grueling, the worst of like, you yep. know, the whole feeling of rejection and not, you know, you can't make For it, sure. you can't do it. And then the highs and the lows of the But that's, the it, reality that's almost that. everything. It, I tell people that you spend about 80% or 85% of the time crying. And stuff, <laughs> the rest of it is that fun. You just soak in it for five minutes because it goes back to that. Absolutely. So quickly. You know, it's never going to, not every day is going to be great. And, um, no. But Liz yeah. Halliday Sharp certainly is, and, and wow, impressive. Oh, thank you. Amazing well, Trying job. to get better every day Congrats. still. Well, <laughs> trying to get awesome. better. Uh, we're going to ask her to stay with us for one more segment while we play our good little funny uh, end segment here with some clips that Gigi uh, with Equiceptional Media has uh, for us from last weekend from the Passer Show. And we're also going to see if Cindy will scoot back over here with us so she can watch as well for this uh, last segment. Perhaps we can get that extra microphone, maybe. Mine's backwards. You want to grab a chair? <coughs> Class Equine Rehab promoting faster recovery is available at the Equine Performance Center Ocala. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy and underwater treadmill, a salt water spa, an aqua pacer, magna wave, a vibration plate, swimming pool, massage, and laser therapies. With post surgical care, memberships, packages, and BOGOs. EPC delivers a rejuvenated horse through proven and innovative rehab. Like Equine Performance Center now on Facebook and find them on the web at epcrehab.com. This hour of the Horse Talk Show is presented by Palm Chevrolet in Ocala, where the entire team is committed to making your experience in sales and service hassle-free and easier than ever with no games or gimmicks. Come in and visit on Southwest College Road or online at palmchevrolet.com. A second-to-none experience with all the amenities. Palm Chevy, find new roads. This hour of the Horse Talk Show is presented by Palm Chevrolet in Ocala. Experience the difference in buying. Palm makes it simple with no pressure, the best sales staff, and lots of inventory. Experience the difference at Palm Chevy in Ocala or online at palmchevrolet.com. Palm Chevy, find new roads. Hi, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. Welcome back to the final segment of the Horse Talk Show this week, presented by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience. Thank you to Larson Farms, our broadcast sponsor, Idaho's finest alfalfa. I'm Louisa Barton, special guest in the studio, Liz Halliday Sharp, co-host Paulette Stout, and we have Cindy Lay here from Exceptional Equestrian and the Kenyan Connection at World Equestrian Center. A um, couple of quick shout outs. Um, I'm gonna welcome Equisafe here. They are going, we're going to be helping them to um, launch a product that came from him being dragged actually three quarters of a mile by the fastest standard bread in the country and burning his entire back and rear end but off. Not. I want to share <laughs> oh my those photos with you, but he got caught up in the reins. How many times have you seen a horse get loose and you've thought the first thing went through your head, oh, I hope those reins don't go around his front legs? And um, how many kids have you seen get dragged by stirrups and reins and things like that? So he has invented this in actually driving reins, English reins, um, racing reins, uh, really incredible. Three patents on this. Um, looking for some investors to help us get this out there. But um, still have your buckle. And um, if your horse gets caught oh. up, 
that. <laughs> Come on, girls, you know you're strong. This is you where I go flying holes. across. I'm going to go like flying across the studio. Oh, <laughs> my, there you go. Oh, round of applause. <laughs> um, so now, you, you know that, that it, you're going to be dead weight, you know, on reins. You're, it's going to come apart. But I'm really impressed, and uh, I, I just there think, especially for the little kids, uh, especially for, sure. for little kids riding, taking <laughs> lessons, something should happen that's... Um, yeah. That's pretty amazing. That's awesome. So, um, so that is EquiSafe. Welcome Passing to them. Back across. Quick, um, quick shout out also to actually the best farrier that has ever done my horse's feet in their lives. My horse is thirty-five. Has been with me for twenty-eight years, and um, he is <coughs> going to be contributing to the show, uh, Master Farrier, and um, uh, giving us uh, sound advice, tips every week to share with you. Uh, about horses' feet and the things you should be concerned about. And uh, that's Jack Montgomery, who is also the inventor of this, which is an amazing product, Copper Cure. I uh, have not been able to get rid of my 35-year-old thrush out of his 35-year-old frogs for over six months, tried everything, and this worked uh, with two uses. So just going to say thank you very much to Jack and um, great, Where great. can you buy that? Um, you can buy it online or from him or... You can just Google it, but it's brilliant. I, I, I mean, I, it packs and it stays, and it's so amazing. So you can't get it at a store around here, though? There are several stores that carry it. Mm. I'll find out which ones, um, but brilliant product. Uh, but we are going to take you to my funny week, <laughs> my funny story here, um, which is I, I actually went out to do a CEP um, highlight on an equine partner um, for Abby Slaven, who is actually helping me with the equine initiative to highlight certain chamber partners that have special um, products or services or horses that are somehow related to the equine industry. We went out to visit the Ocala Pasofino Association at the United Pasofino Farm and I had an opportunity to ride my first Pasofino um, <laughs> which was Donna Blanca, very very beautiful, uh, lovely, lovely mare. Oh um, this is actually not my <laughs> first ride. Uh, I'd love to say that was my first ride. Actually my first ride was at the farm and uh, it, it was down in Summerfield and Ali Ortiz and uh, a sweet little Jay Suarez who usually rides this horse uh, let me ride in the round. I rode in the round pen for five minutes with the trainer and then the trainer said okay now you can go to the board. So he takes me out to the board and I go down the board once and back and um, Louisa absolutely Barton. loved it. It was, it was amazing uh, experience and um, when we when we came back they said okay you're showing next weekend and I said what do you mean I'm showing they said yeah you're showing you're going to show next weekend in the new year festival so this is at the farm this is my first time right here uh, on a um, a on a Pasofino and I've been on for maybe like maybe seven or eight minutes and they take me out um, uh, they take me out uh, to the board and this is the sounding board and of course I have no idea if I'm going the right speed I have no idea if she's supposed to be going slower faster what I'm supposed to be doing I have no well, idea I really want to know what what do you do it's amazing what uh, are you so doing anything yes or? okay your hands are actually <laughs> like a piano mm -hmm. so you're kind of like English but turned so you're a little okay. bit like a piano and what you do is you actually draw up a little bit when you want them to slow down a little bit more but you have to like lower your hands and take all pressure off which is pretty right. normal and then when you want them to stop that's what you do but you almost completely release when you want them to stop and you sit back a little bit more but this motion like playing the piano is actually what changes the like the speed that they're going so, yeah, so really? it, yes so i showed in wow. classic fino which is actually the supposed to be the slowest of the of the of gates that they the do because they yeah. do several different ones there's a quarto that's much faster and this one is actually supposed to be like the slowest one where you're not covering like as much ground but you want to talk about the smoothest most comfortable mm. amazing ride mm. and and it was what and i when they said i was going in the amateur class i'm imagining myself in there with beginners so i'm in there with like champions <laughs> because amateur just means you're not a trainer 
Oh, um, okay. So there's like, yeah. you know, yeah, like champions in there. And I, there were six of us. So I'm not a um, participation award person. I'm just not. I think if you don't get it, you don't <laughs> get it. So the six of us in there and I'm like, well, you know what? It's kind of cool to have a souvenir. I'm going to have a six place ribbon. And I can <laughs> say I did it. But I didn't. I got a fourth place <gasps> ribbon. <Yay. laughs> nice. <laughs> so, um, and I can tell you what, I've never met such a group of amazing people. People coming up to me the day before I went to the livestock pavilion during the tornado watch when there's like a squall coming in and the roof boom, 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 and I go for like a five minute practice on the board to find out um, what to do and Raphael who is the trainer so patient bless him um, and helped me so much and so I, I'm riding, riding her down the board and afterwards all these people I've never met before coming up to me do you need to borrow a jacket you need to borrow this do you need britches <laughs> Ali Ortiz took me and bought me my black hat to wear. Oh, lovely. I felt just like... Oh, my like, goodness. I felt Thank like you. so incredible. And then Georgia from Good Apple lent me that beautiful shirt. And, like, they decked me out. Wow. I mean, I put my English riding boots on under the, under the pants there. And um, I cannot believe what amazingly <laughs> wonderful people, Denise and Christine, and, and Denise who has MS. Oh, that's my practice during the tornado watch. Oh my goodness. Um, and she's an amazing man. This is at the Florida Horse Beautiful Park, right? This one no, was this actually oh, this is a livestock pavilion. Oh, okay, that's okay. Jay. Mm -hmm. She oh. is so sweet. All the way around the arena, I'm trying not to crack up. Everybody else is dead serious pan face like this. <laughs> and I'm giggling because I go down one side and I hear Louisa, you go, you can do Aww. it. And then I go down the other side and there's three more people go, yeah, Louisa, you can do it. And some Aww. of them I don't even, and the train is like going around watching me. And Jay, little Jay is running <laughs> down each side going <laughs> at me like That's this. Awesome. And I'm like, I never felt so like loved. <laughs> and I can't believe I did it a week later after I rode her for the first time and I was like okay I'll do this so to me it was I haven't shown do you know how long since I've shown a horse 20 years probably wow you went straight in all I've done is like trail ride and beach ride this could be your future <laughs> <laughs> hey listen I'm now a member Oh, you know, so wow! <laughs> you have to be a member to show. So, um, but that was such a wonderful experience. I so loved it. We can't be at the end of the show. Oh, I want to show. Anyway, we want to share those wonderful interviews with you. So maybe we can just run over just a little bit for for Facebook, right? So let me say goodbye to everybody on the radio for the radio. So if you're listening on the Sky ninety seven point three or radio dot com, we're actually leaving you right now. But if you're watching us on Facebook live, you can stay and see some more. And if you're on <laughs> Equus TV, which we're on for the first time, airing live on Equus Television on Roku, um, stay tuned. We've got a little bit more for you for the rest of you on the radio. Happy horsing around. Until next time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm Louisa Barton for the Horse Talk Show here at the United Pasifino Farm in Ocala, this the horse capital of the world. It's part, oh, of wow. course, of the um, Ocala Pasifino Association. And I'm here with Ali Ortiz, the owner, and also a young rider here who is a uh, top equestrian, uh, Jay Suarez. Going to talk a little bit about the Pasifino breed to start with and ask Ali just a few questions people are often curious about when they see Pasifinos in action. And I was surprised to learn that they're actually born with their gait, which I think is awesome as a horse lover. So I'm going to have Ali tell us a little bit about that. Ali, welcome to the Horse Talk Show. I'm going to run over here and switch over to uh, Jay Suarez here. And Jay, tell us a few things about you, you've ridden uh, for me, quite a few years, right? Seven, seven or eight years. Uh, and you're 10 years old. Tell us a little bit about the breed. I love this breed because it's just like my whole family does it and I just want to follow that tradition of doing it. Wonderful. And you love to compete? Yes, I really do. Do you love to win? Yes. <laughs>